to mellow everybody. Hello, are we awake? Gary Benjamin. Wow. Wow, you folks. Jeez, I'm starting to feel, that felt really good while I was doing it. I was like, there's something that bad out there. Oh, man. From the number one fishing port in America, New Bedford, Massachusetts, welcome to the Paul Santos Live Show. Tonight's guests are from the band Emuter, Ross and Danny. Yeah. The NB Rude Boys. Yeah. Comic A J G. Yeah. Animated filmmaker Julia Hurley Francisco. Seymoish. Gary Langevin and Artie DeMello. It's the PSL Band. Thank you, Allison. And me, I'm Allison Dyan. Hello, and thank you for watching. Allison. And
And now, ladies and gentlemen, the host of our show, Paul Santos! Hello and welcome, welcome to our little show. How's everybody feeling tonight? Yeah. Oh, hot crowd, Allison, hot crowd. Yeah. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, as always. Ariarty, what up, what up? We're doing fantastic. <laughs> Paul, good to see you. Well, if we're watching the show live on YouTube or Facebook, like it, share it, and type something in. Do a little finger thing. Allison does this little finger thing, right? Absolutely. <laughs> type in, say hello, let us know where you're watching from, and give us a nice little friendly comment, and we'll get right back to you. We highlight the talented, the interesting, and the entertaining from our area. Our show is loaded with talent tonight. But first, let's get caught up in the news. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Well, just in case you missed the eclipse, in 2026, there is going to be an eclipse in Portugal. Did you know that? Yeah. It's going to be like seeing a big pork butt in the sky. <laughs> I'm it's waiting. called the Eclipse Muto Grande. Oh, Muto Grande. <laughs> Named after Casey's ex. <laughs> no, no, I understand that that uh, eclipse in Portugal is going to have total blockage. Kind of like what happens to you if you eat too much chorizo. <laughs> that was good. That was a good one. I like that you look to me for approval. I think that's, I think that's yeah, great. I, I, I seek approval. I seek approval. Well, anyway, uh, you know what happened in Vermont? What? In Vermont, during the eclipse, Fall River's Joel Butler proposed to his partner, Jason Bertrand. Isn't that Aww. nice? Aww. Yeah, oh, nice, sweet. nice, nice. He got down on one knee, and at the moment of totality, he said, will you marry me? Then the sun came out, and he's like, hey, where did you go? Where did you go? <laughs> <laughs> not sure that, but not sure about that punchline. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't really get it. I'll get it later, though, I promise you. <laughs> anyway, that was an easy one to follow. Oh, well, when the sun came out, he was like, do I really want to yeah, get married right now? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he was looking up at the sun, he's <laughs> blind eyes. Why don't we freaking take that one better? Got to put those glasses on, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> well, anyway, uh, speaking of marriage, Allison. Yes? After just three months, just three months of marriage, the Golden Bachelor is getting divorced. Can you believe that? Wow. I can believe oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> just, I mean, that is just awful. They asked the Golden Bachelor, why are you getting divorced after only three months? He said... Well, you know, I'm in my 70s. I haven't got 30 years to listen to this crap. Wow. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Come on, that was a damn good one right there. That was a damn good one. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate yeah. the help over there. Been a long time since you heard that, right? Hey, uh, <laughs> you like going to the casino, right? Oh, God, She's yeah. a casino girl over there. I Never been. the John Parada comedy show the other night. Well, anyway, a South Coast woman struck it big recently at a casino. <laughs> and during the moment of excitement, she yelled out, My ship, my ship has finally come in. Well, we know your South Coast rail train hasn't come in. Oh, hey. Sorry, it's a little premature on that one. What is going on with that South Coast rail? You know what I think? I think we're getting a big choo-choo right in the caboose. That's yeah. what I think. For sure. You know, right in the caboose. I'm riding on the rails on a crazy train. I like it when you come in with a caboose. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Don't throw yourself out. <laughs> I just threw my back out. I need All a right. chiropractor. You've been taking Pilates, but just not get cocky. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I heard this in the news, Allison. There has oh. been a spike in measles. Can you believe that? Oh. Yeah, I didn't good. know there was a spike in measles. Weasels, maybe, but not measles. <laughs> <laughs> you said, I'm sorry, you said measles? Measles. Yeah. I thought you said easels. <laughs> Oh, and the Bob Ross <laughs> fan club is really kicking ass. <laughs> oh, go on. I'm sorry. I know it's bad. It's fine. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> did you hear about this? Uh, the first human ever to receive a pig kidney transplant is now resting comfortably at home. Isn't that amazing? Wow, that's yeah. cool. A pig kidney transplant. I couldn't believe it. The poor guy he was only home for five minutes, and his wife said, can you stop making a mess already? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about bringing home the bacon. No. Uh, <laughs> right? That's not, that's <laughs> Well, well, you know, that joke was sizzling, babe. <laughs> ever, ever since the man got home with that pig kidney transplant, <laughs> he noticed an increase in his libido. Do you know that? Wow. Yeah, all of a sudden he kept saying, hog timey, hog timey. Wow. <laughs> 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 
Allison says that without the transplant. Uh. Hey. That's right. Not and Paul's saying, untie me, untie me. Untie no. me, untie me. <laughs> cut me loose, cut me loose. That's right. Oh, tapping out, tapping hey, out. Hey, this is a really good story. You folks will be interested in this. You know, the Candlelight Concert Series is coming to the McVinney Auditorium in Providence. Now, if you don't know what that is, the Candlelight Concert Series is thousands of candles illuminating the venue as the concert goes on. And it's really, really been a big hit across the country. Candles illuminating the venue. I'm thinking, wow, something else lit besides the audience. Nice. <laughs> Goodbye, no machine. You know you'll never know you at all. That's not enough. Now, uh, speaking of lit, Gary, how are you doing now? Oh, I am so lit right now, man. <laughs> I am not kidding you. I doubled up. I stopped by my neighbor's house on the way here. I can tell. I can tell. And I said, Ronnie, listen, I need a shot. I'm going over to the... He's all fired up. He's said, all fired up. I'm going to know where. And he goes, yeah, I know where. Here's, here's a double. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm pretty, and I didn't even eat dinner yet, so. Well, anyway, you know, I'm sorry to bring this news to you, Allison. I'm sorry to bring this news oh, to you. Oh, no. It's come very quickly, too. I don't know. It just seems uh, to come quicker, quicker every single story way. Of your life, bro. I am <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm now going to deliver the final joke of the night. The final They're, they're always the loudest when it's... Wait a minute, what happened? What happened? The I final joke just, just brings the my, my eardrums, I, I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm getting a headache over here. How do you think they feel? from the eclipse? <laughs> 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 well, anyway, um, did you hear about this great news? A man hit for a million dollars at the Dartmouth Stop and Shop right down here in the oh scratch wow. ticket. Yeah, did you hear about that? Came out with some good produce. <laughs> <laughs> So they asked him, they said, who are you going to call first, your wife? He said, no, my divorce attorney. <laughs> but as Aaron knows, that's one day too late, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> hey, by the way, all this talk about groceries and everything, it kind of reminds me of something. It reminds me of one of Artie's ex-girlfriends. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Artie's ex-girlfriend. Oh, so gross. Yeah, yeah, Donna Delicatessen. Oh, so <laughs> gross. It didn't go so well. She left him for a meat man. Yes. The, the final joke, everybody. Oh, Big round of applause for Paul Santos' final joke. Woo! Hey, Allison, you got that one, the meat man, right? You got that one, the meat oh, man? Okay. Oh, I got it, 100%. You got a man with all the meat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, we have a great show for you tonight. Everybody feeling good? Oh, what a great crowd we have for you tonight. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our sponsors. How about this location? They let us come here every single week, and we're so happy. Mikey B's of New Bedford. Attorney John B.C., thank you. Cisco New Bedford and our good friend Steve Silverstein. Alden Court, another good friend, Sharon Jensen. Hi, Rick Marrero down there at Kingswear. Uh, let's see, let's see. Surf Pro New Bedford, Doug Glassman. And okay. the lady who runs her own comedy company. She's the CEO from Dying for Laughs. I want Allison Dian. Allison Dian. Thank you. And last but not least, the guy that puts all the wires together. He really knows his stuff from Bristol County Media, Mr. Aaron Kaju. Aaron the Baron. <laughs> Will the South Coast Rail make its way down here before the next solar eclipse is the question that I have. Yeah. <laughs> My money's on the eclipse. I, uh, <laughs> all right, we have our first guest. A couple of guys that are with our show for a long time. They're terrific. We're so glad to have them back. A couple of guys from Bermuda are going to be with us in just a moment. It's the Paul Santos Live Show. Thank you so much for listening in. Right now, here's Gary Hardy and the PSL Band. Let's hear it for Gary Hardy and the PSL band. How about those guys? Huh? Wow. It's nice to be here today on this. Uh, it's a three-day weekend thing that's going on here, right? Go ahead. Look who's up here. It's our company director, Allison Dyan. There she is. Hi. Well, Allison, you know, it's so great to be here on... Uh, 
Marathon Monday, right? Patriots Day and everything. It's really nice to be here. It is. It's really nice to be here. And I just admire anyone who's running the marathon. <laughs> I really do. I mean, because the only thing I can run is late. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. But running late is awesome, okay? Because it's the only contest where you get first place by coming in last. Ah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're late too often, like maybe like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I don't know why you're late. I'm fashionably late. Oh, fashionably late. Well, yes, I, yeah. I'm very fashionable. I should be a supermodel with how late I am. <laughs> and then you kind of make that big uh, entrance, you know? Exactly, exactly. Well, the Immuter guys are getting all set up over there. We're going to be tossing it to them in just a moment. I can't uh, wait. Yeah, we really have a jam-packed show tonight. We have so many guests. And we're just going to keep things moving along. It's going to be so much fun. We're so excited uh, to have everybody here tonight. And uh, I'm looking out here. What a great-looking studio audience we got here tonight. Come on now. It is a full house in here. We are packed. <laughs> hey, look who's here tonight. It's the one, the only, Mr. Juicy Brucey is in the house. There he is. <laughs> Hi. Uh, you know, he doesn't like to say it, but he's definitely still juicy. Uh, we know that. <laughs> he's absolutely juicy. <laughs> And Mary Ann, Mary Ann, thanks for coming out tonight. All right. And, uh, Love Mary Ann. And you know who's here tonight? You know, a little while back, they wrote a newspaper article about us in a Portuguese magazine called La Praça. Well, you know who's here tonight? Maria Cavallo, thanks for being here tonight. If you have a chance to check out that Portuguese publication, La Praça, you did a really nice job on the article. That's awesome. Yeah, really nice. Very and nice we actually got a translated version, so if you want to uh, read it in English, you can. Yes, I would definitely love to. All right, well, at this time, let's introduce our first guest. These guys were part of our show for a while. They have a great group, a muter, but they're performing as a duo tonight. Yeah. Would you put your hands together for Dan Vasquez and Ross Souza? <laughs> Thank you. 
right, how about that? Ross and Danny from Immuna. Hey, great to see you guys. <laughs> hey, great to see you guys. Let's hear it again. All right, all right. Well, it's so great to have you guys here tonight. You guys are a big part of our show for a long time. You're always welcome to come back. And, you know, I didn't know you guys worked a little bit as a duo here. This is a pretty good one-two punch you got going here. Is this thing on? Oh, cool, cool. It is on. All right, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to talk into yours or what. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool. Uh, we grew up together, so we. this is what we've been doing in our, like, our rooms. You Here, you can talk at the mic. Hey, Paul. Hey, what's up, Ross? We are so happy uh, <laughs> to be here. I finally feel like I made it. <laughs> yeah, that's right, baby. Uh, a little underdressed, though. I'm, you know, I, know, last I didn't get the uh, I didn't get the email for the suits. Yeah, did. last time I was here, you know, I, I think it's been pretty good. We're off the books, I think. Last time. <laughs> but actually, now me, like me and Danny have been neighbors like our whole life, so this is actually like our first time doing this. We always jam together, but I play drums in the band. He sings, and you know, we always just we've always jammed and we've had a good connection. So we just said, why not give it a shot and talk about the band and upcoming things. So. You know, I got to tell you, I'm uh, blown away here because I see in the back playing the drums and, you know, slipping in a wisecrack here and there, which yeah. we like to do. Yeah. But I didn't know you could play the keys like that. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. it. I like it. Yeah, I wish I, uh, I, wish I uh, actually took lessons and stuff. Yeah, there's actually a guy behind the blue thing. Yeah, he's actually who's playing uh, behind the curtain. So. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about a muter. What's going on with the band right now? Oh, well, right now, uh, so we, we played a couple shows. You know, we just got finished doing uh, UMass. We were doing, uh, like, they had a, like a big thing for the eclipse, so we played in front of a lot of people there. It was really fun, but I think right now we're kind of at the stage that we're you know getting ready to go into studio. Uh, yeah, we kind of uh, took uh, you know we love playing out all the bars and stuff on the weekends. It's fun, but yeah. we're really trying to concentrate on our original music. Yeah. So uh, we're actually going to Q Division up in Boston. It's a world-renowned studio, and we're going to do uh, one of our originals. So hopefully, if it goes well, we're going to try to do like a studio EP, maybe an album there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, everything's going good. We booked for a bunch of shows. We got. Uh, Club 65 this oh weekend, yeah, Friday, right. Saturday Bay at Bayside, Bayside, Saturday, but more, not more importantly, but with some of the bigger original shows that we have, we're headlining like the Lakeside Festival, uh, the Festival in Fairhaven, we got the Big E this year, so we kind of got like a, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, in Springfield, so we actually, uh, we just got the call about that, so hopefully we play the feast again, and uh, yeah, 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 just yeah. trying to get our names out as much as we can, and you know, it's a passion, so we'll never give up on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, what about the writing? Who does the writing? You guys collaborate? Uh, it's Chat GPT, uh, it's AI. <laughs> yeah. Uh, most I can mostly. give you guys the link when we leave here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally. uh, it, it's it really is a team effort. You know, uh, anything that has to do with like the vocals, you know, that's more me. Anything that's got to do with the drums, everybody kind of has their lane. Everything that they add to the song, so it's a it's a real group effort. Uh, do you have an original that you like to do for us tonight? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. We'll do, we're, we got a song called Passerby. Once again, written by ChatGPT. Uh, <laughs> 15 minutes before we got here, actually, so it's really thrown together. We need you to pull it up. Uh, but yeah, no, it's called Passerby. Uh, it's on our last EP, Punch Drunk Lullabies. So actually, fun um, fact, me and Danny wrote this song like way back in 2014. Oh, yeah. And we finally re-recorded it with the whole band and everything. And it's actually yeah. on our EP, and we just put it out like last year. So it's going I know well. the song. I know the song, and I like it. Tell the folks what it's about. Uh, well, it's actually about a guy who, uh, you know, who's unhappy with his uh, life, how things are going. Uh, somebody's getting a phone call, uh, <laughs> making sure. <coughs> uh, <a> <laughs> uh, and he, he lives in his dreams. Uh, he has, uh, you know, pretty, vid like pretty vivid dreams. dreams. Yeah, he can yeah. control them. He lives his, yeah, he lives his life uh, through his dreams because uh, he finds that they're much more fulfilling than, uh, than real, real life. So. That's interesting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, from Immuta, Ross and Danny with Passerby. Here we go. Thank you.
from this punch drum. A lullaby, lullaby. When I close my eyes. and Danny from Thank Immuter. You. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Of course. Uh, some great kids, rising stars, and just doing a fantastic job with Immuter. We wish them all the best. Keep reaching for the stars, gentlemen. You're already like halfway there, I think. Oh, they're incredible. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Absolutely incredible. Well, speaking of incredible, we have a comic behind that curtain in the, what do we call that, the green? He's asking me if there was a green room. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, there's a green room, all right, behind that curtain. Oh, yeah, we're very Willy Wonka here. <laughs> so when you open the curtain, it's a whole other world back there. <laughs> well, Kevin Robertson is watching tonight, and he says, Hey, Allison, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. We so like that interaction. Cynthia Contige from the Hardwire Rock Group, thank you very much for looking in tonight. Thank and you. And Ron Andrews, thank you very much for looking in. If you got something to say, do that. How do you do this thing like yeah, this? Yeah, absolutely. You did that thing with the computer. Type it Type in. Type something in. You know, say hello to Casey, or, you know, if you're really desperate or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't think. <laughs> we want to hear from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is a really great comic. You're really going to like this guy. He's a lot of fun. Say hello to a JG. Some people have voice for radio. Some have face for TV. I have the accent for customer service. 
Every silence is being recorded for quality purposes. Those who don't laugh will have to fill out the survey. <laughs> you can't press zero and skip my jokes. I'm the one who shows up when you press zero. Don't bother talking to my supervisor. It would be still me in a different t-shirt. This is a two for one special. When I'm done with my act, I can fix your phone. <laughs> I'm tired about all this talk about innovation and progress. We sent rockets to Mars. We cured so many diseases. If that is all true, then why? Men have only two choices. Briefs or boxers? <laughs> Half of the humanity has hundreds of choices. Bikinis, panties, cheekies, hipsters, tanka, boy shorts, low rise, mid rise, high rise, G string, thong. <laughs> and the other half, tight or loose? Where is the progress? You know, there has been 173 years, first shoe was invented that can make a man look taller. Why can't we have innovation in men's underwear to make things look longer? <laughs> Women have underwire bras. Why can't men have boxer with wraparound wire? Even the brands are so lame. Fruit of the loom. We need like a strong men specific brands like sperm veil <laughs> he shoots he scores <laughs> now i understand there are some men who are traditionalists they say everybody in their generations wear boxers so i'm going to wear boxer some go even further they say my grandfather wore brief my father wore the same exact brief. <laughs> now it's a family heirloom. <laughs> it is called passing the DNA from one generation to another. <laughs> one stain at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a certified Doga teacher. You heard the word right. The word is D-O-G-A Doga. I teach yoga to dogs. When I take my dog Bruno to yoga class, I get this question a lot. Your dog is so adorable. Is he adopted? No, he's my biological dog. <laughs> when his mom was eight months pregnant, instead of a C-section, we got a D-section and we got Bruno. That's D for dog. Thank God she didn't offer for E-section. Then we have to deal with an elephant. <laughs> and we all know how rough it is to have in the family a biological Republican. <laughs> Do you know there is a new trend couples are finding happiness? In a long-term relationship, if couples are not satisfied with each other, they are now experimenting with a third person to blame. <laughs> I found out accidentally, there is a guy at work, Kevin contacted me. He said, hey Ajay, you have met my wife. We both like you. Would you be interested in a kind of no string attach, one night blame? And I said, why me? And he gave me a profound answer. He said, first, she likes to be blamed by someone with an accent. That's her thing. Because a man with an accent does not just blame. He knows how to admonish, berate, chide, castigate, criticize, condemn, denounce, roast, rebukes, saddle, scold, upbraid. Oh, such a talented, tantalizing tongue. <laughs> Just imagine where that tongue can go next.
And because you are an Indian, when we blame you, it has got this nice feeling of all our problems getting outsourced. Thank you very much. That's my time. My name is Ajay Ji. All right, grab a seat. Let's hear it again for Ajay G. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you. Glad to be here. Hey, um, I just had to ask you a question. Um, you didn't work for Comcast customer service, did you? Uh, maybe I will do it in future. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'll get jobs because of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Well, I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm glad you're here. And uh, the thing that's really great is obviously you're uh, from India originally, yeah. but you moved to Boston, right? Yeah, 30, 30 years ago, I had this vision that I'm going to be on Paul Santos' show. <laughs> so I moved it to Boston. <laughs> the problem is that Paul Santos himself hasn't figured that out yet. So I have to wait till today. <laughs> well, you actually, and, and it's not, you know, I'm just putting this out there because you're a highly intelligent person. You went to Harvard. Can you believe that? Let's hear it. <laughs> oh, okay. So what happened is I have a thing going on with uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook founder. So he wanted to be rich, I wanted to be rich. He's partially colorblind, I'm partially colorblind. Then he went to Harvard University. I said, how the hell I'm going to get in? But I applied, I got in. Then at Harvard, he started a social network called Facebook. At Harvard, I started a social network called MyBully. Then he dropped out of Harvard to focus on his social network. I dropped, of, dropped out of Harvard to focus on my social network. Then he become billionaire goes to Washington, D.C. and gives testimony in front of Congress. I go to New Bedford, Massachusetts and do stand-up comedy. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> but here is the thing. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is a genius, but he did a stupid thing like dropping out of college, right. and then he became a billionaire. So the, what happens is the word stupidity loses its value. People do not call out when there is something stupid because they are afraid. Maybe he's genius. So the only way to prove them wrong is to follow the footsteps of stupid thing, what Mark did, and not become a billionaire. Yeah, imagine that. That's something. Get a little fork in the road there. Yeah. Exactly. Every year, there are hundreds of parents who argue with their, uh, hundreds of students argue with their parents. Hey, mom and dad, why can't I drop out of college? Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of Harvard and see where you are going there. And all these parents couldn't answer all these days. But now they have an answer. Oh, really? That guy, Ajay Ji, also dropped out of Harvard and he does stand-up comedy. Is that what you want in your life? <laughs> right? So for the benefit of those parents, benefit of English language, for benefit of humanity, I made stupidity great again. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, for people that are around here, we have a big Portuguese population, right? Are you aware of that? No, I was not. Can we hear, how many people here are of Portuguese descent? <laughs> All right. Well, you're of Indian descent. Right. And uh, you're wearing this outfit right here. Can you explain what this outfit is? This yeah. is from the Indian culture, right? Yeah, it's an Indian culture. It is called Kurta, K-U-R-T-A. R is silent in Boston. Kurta. So you don't say si silent. Kurta? Kurta. Okay. Yeah. So... I didn't know people were in Portuguese descent because <laughs> my father actually was a freedom fighter and there was a Portuguese colony in India and my father went to jail to basically get Portuguese out of India. No stuff. Yeah. Wow. But I still love you here. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry I brought that up. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Got to get those Portuguese out of there. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, that's great. But no, I, I, I love the outfit. I love people when, they, when they're proud of their culture and they want to keep their culture going. So I think that's great. So what's in the future for you? Future for me? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be performing in uh, New York on Broadway Comedy Club uh, on 26th. Wow, that's awesome. There yeah. Is, there is a show called Laughing Lassie for all the comedians from Southeast Asia will be performing there. Oh, that'd be so great. So you're going to go from the Paul Santos live show right to the Big Apple. Right, right to, to the Big, big Apple. apple. That's, ah, that's exactly. pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. I like that. Thank you. So how did you get involved in comedy? You came to Boston from India, and then you're a funny guy. How did that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> so I was uh, basically going for a colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it started. Because I realized that the colonoscopy, I'm paying the doctor, the doctor is paying the insurance in the hospital, and the, there are students, and they wanted to see my colonoscopy. 
they wanted consent. And I said, I'm not going to give the consent for free. <laughs> you have to pay me $1 a ticket. <laughs> and I convinced them at the colonoscopy table that they have to buy the ticket to get my consent. And I, that's why I realized if I can sell tickets to my colonoscopy, I could do anything in this world. <laughs> it's you know, a true story. There's a guy here, Crazy Casey. He's come up here at least three, four times to talk about his colonoscopy. You know? Okay. So we okay. <laughs> let us meet after this. Okay, Casey, you can sell tickets. You know, it would be great. I, I'm an expert in the show, but I need to make money. <laughs> okay. You're going to have to teach him how to make money at the colonoscopy. Yeah. We could have the colonoscopy together and project on the big screen. <laughs> yes, you, you all are invited for our show. We are going to have an open bar and open bar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a real a tremendous comic. Let's hear it one more time for a JG. Thank you very much. For being on the show tonight. Uh, stay right there, okay? Uh, we got a great gr musical group here, AJ. Uh, these guys have been down here for uh, quite a while. They're building up their uh, ska music, I guess is pretty much what you could say. If you ever see these guys out performing, I mean, they can just get a crowd rocking, whether it's Cisco, whether it's the Madeira Feast, or whether it's the Vault this coming Saturday night on 420. These guys are all ready to go, and we're so happy to have them here tonight on our show. Ladies and gentlemen, would you put your hands together? Let's get a nice rousing applause for the NB Root Boys! Test one, two. There we go. We'll try that one instead. How's that? <laughs> All right. Are you ready out there with the MB Rude Boys? We're going to be forming Saturday night, April 20th at the vault. Yeah. 420. Are we ready, ladies and gentlemen? Saturday night at the vault, 420, 6 to midnight, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you there. Thank you, Paul Santos. All right, how about that? The NB Root Boys. Yeah, bring that mic over if you don't mind, because I want to chat with you. Well, all right, all right, all right. Sean Fitzgerald, how you doing, man? Hey, Let's Paul, hear it for these guys you? one more time. Come on, come on. These guys are awesome. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Paul. This is Allison's seat, isn't it? Yeah, that's all right, but you have permission. You can sit there. Is that right? <laughs> 
Go ahead, grab the seat. Come Somebody on, was asking it. about this seat, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they were. They're like, that seat that Allison sits on, is there some way you can take that seat? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to ask Allison. I don't know about that. But anyway, so how are you, Paul? Yeah, it's great to see you. You know, Paul asks everybody questions, but nobody asks Paul questions. Uh -oh. So, Paul, how did you get into this line of business? <laughs> oh, man. You, what, was, gonna, what was your inspiration? Well, this is going to take a long time. When I was a little kid, I used to listen to the radio, uh -huh. and I kind of liked broadcasting, but I was right. torn between a legal career because my family was in the legal career. My dad was a probation officer. My brother became a magistrate. So I was interested in both. So I've always had both. I've always been an attorney by day and a broadcaster by night, and that's kind of nice. how it started. Yeah. It's kind of your dual identity, right? You yeah, I guess. You're, you're yeah. Clark Kent, and then you've got your <laughs> Superman on Monday nights, right? Very nice. Yeah, but you do something during the day too, right? I do. I do a number of things. Yeah. I'm a real estate agent for Landing and Company. Oh, nice. And I also uh, I'm a uh, case manager for a program where we help homeless folks find uh, permanent housing. So 100%. that's challenging in today's 100%. day. But um, and at night, I uh, I put on my cape and I'm the lead singer for the NB Rude Boys, along with my uh, com compadres here. Yeah, who do we got here tonight? Let's introduce these guys. Okay, so on my right here, we have on bass, ladies and gentlemen, Rick Rude. Give it up for Rick. On trumpet, vocals, and the best hair in New Bedford, Mr. Stephen Furtado, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. The man with the booming voice, a hype man, Mr. Don Chisel, ladies and gentlemen, a.k.a. Walter Grant. And the man with the noise and the sounds who keeps it all together. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Don Legg. Other members not here, John Vasconcellos, Bob Place, Luke Gosselin as well. They're home nursing a, um, a bruised ego, I believe it was. But uh, we hope they'll be ready for Saturday night. <laughs> All right, so Saturday night, it just happens to be 420. It does. And you guys are going to be at the vault. Yes. I mean, just rocking the place, right? Yes, so tell we are. Tell us about that. So 420 in uh, the culture that has become legal in the last four or five years, um, has become, uh, it's somewhat like a holiday for folks who uh, imbibe in the uh, marijuana strains as well as the Earth Day festivities. Earth Day is traditionally April 22nd. So this is kind of a culmination of all of those things as well as just celebrating life in general. We've got four live bands that night. We've got the NB Root Boys. We've got Concrete Beach. They're from Somerset. They play a lot down in Connecticut and Rhode Island. We've got the Ricky Rocksteady All-Stars from Providence, and we've got the Rins, new band from Boston, Mass., um, formerly Doped Up Dolly singer, Aaron McKenzie's in this band. Uh, we're really excited. And we've got the High Times Cannabis Cup DJ, Lotus Sound, who performed in Amsterdam with Method Man, Red Man, uh, a few of the folks from Wu-Tang Clan. So we're doing this all Saturday night, April 20th, $10 in advance, 15 at the door. So four live bands. A DJ that actually plays records. He doesn't come in with a laptop and press buttons. He's actually spinning, mixing, matching, right. doing everything. So uh, lots of fun. We've got uh, door prizes and um, one special gift. Somebody that night's going to win a free date with Walter Grant, Don Chisel, ah, ladies and gentlemen. There you go, there so, you go. All right. Ooh, so step wow. up, come on down for uh, the show of the year, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. Now, one time you came on the show, you could actually do some crooner stuff, too. I mean, you're yes. multi-talented, right? Yes, Do a little, little Frank Sinatra stuff like that. It's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. How you could do, like, this kind of music and also do that, too. Sure, it's a little bit of everything. It matches you know, the, the, the many personalities that are running around in my head. <laughs> yes, they're bouncing around. My um, insanity didn't run in my family. It galloped, Paul, <laughs> pretty much, yes, like a stallion, yes, like a thoroughbred. So, uh, yeah, so it helps uh, me kind of facilitate these things rather than um, doing something silly and having to call you to get me onto a, a yeah. bind, right? <laughs> attorney Paul Santos. Yes, that's right. right. And by the way, uh, Bennett over there, he's an attorney too. You two he lawyers is. up here. He right? is. I do. So uh, Rick Rude by night, but by day also attorney Richard Bennett, ladies that's and gentlemen, right, on the base. <laughs> so, you know, anybody leaving tonight, if the cops stop you, you've got plenty of representation here <laughs> if you need it. So it uh, should be all set, but you didn't hear that from but me. But if something happens to one of us, we can't represent ourselves because then yeah. we'd have a fool for a client. You know that's that right. Way. Very true, very true. <laughs> All right, so uh, hey, we really appreciate you coming down. This is fantastic. It's very rare that we can crowd everybody in like that, but we wanted to make it work for you guys. You guys have a fantastic band. You have a fantastic following. Go see these guys in person because it's nothing like you've ever seen before if you haven't seen them in person. They can just get the crowd rocking. So Saturday night at the vault, 420. 
Go out and celebrate. It'll 420, be check out our album, Welcome to Rude Bedford. It's available on all the streaming platforms, Apple, iTunes, Spotify. Welcome to Rude Bedford. We're the NB Rude Boys. This is Paul Santos. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. Right, Thanks, guys. That. All right. Once again, the NB Rude Boys. <laughs> all right. Oh, do you want to? All right. You want to do one more song? All right. Let's go. I know when should we do one more song? Yeah. All right. Here I we said, go. should the we do boys. one more song? Like this one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. This is an original. Out at Mikey B's last night, Rude Boy was ranking. Saw suits on duty, lady was skanking. So I ordered a shot, started walking over. And I spied my girl walking in, she caught a Casanova, over, over. Duck and cover, duck and cover. Rude boy almost got caught checking out another. So I grabbed my girl, I took her to the table. And I spied my girl, welcome out. She's too willing and able. So I ordered two shots, yeah. but Rudy knew better. I'm gonna check that cutie for now. I'll save that girl for later, later, later. Duck and cover, yeah, duck and cover. Rude boy almost got caught checking out another. Duck and cover, yeah, duck and cover. One more time on the leash, and she'll leave you for another, 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 don't you so? Yeah, a duck and cover, rude boy of a cover. Say you dip into the crowd, trying to stash your lover. Yeah, a duck and cover, rude boy of a cover. Say you feeling under pressure with your undercover lover. Yeah, a duck and cover, rude boy of a cover. I say, one first move in your home. One more time, NB Root Boys! Good.
All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have another guest here, another accomplished person, originally from New Bedford, Massachusetts, now living in Miami, and she is an animated filmmaker, and she's visiting home, and we figured we got to get her on the show before she goes back to Miami. Would you please welcome Julia Hurley Francisco Cibos? <laughs> ah, yes. Oh, great to have you here tonight. I'm glad I caught you before you went back to Miami. Oh, you know what? Grab that microphone right off the top of there. Without that, we, have to, we always forget something over here. This is a crazy night here on the show. We don't usually put this much into one show, but we're so glad we did because we've had so many talented people here tonight. So, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Now, i got to ask you something, right? Yeah. Ooh. Uh-oh. Did I break this already? No, no. That actually is <laughs> like, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even put it on correctly. That's okay. So tell me about what you started. Like when you say animated, it, it has to do with puppets and stuff like that, right? Yes. So I was always inspired by Tim Burton, the old kind of Rudolph movies, and I was always curious to find out like how they made puppets. So you decided that you were going to go into this for a career, right? Yes. I mean, yeah. that's not the easiest decision to make, right? Making puppets and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. It was a tough one to tell the parents. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to make puppets. Uh, no, but it, it's, it's working for you. Yeah, so I just made, um, well, I've been working on like a couple music videos, but this is kind of the old film that I worked on um, more about New Bedford, and now it's going to be at the New Bedford Film Festival this weekend. Ah, that's awesome. New Bedford Film Festival. Let's hear it now. Let's hear it. Thank you. All right, so, oops, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Which way does it go? This way? It's the jokes. It's knocking his hat right off. <laughs> Yeah, apparently the puppet heard the monologue. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Um, so tell me about this puppet. What's the significance of this puppet right here? So that's the captain of uh, my film. My film is more inspired by, like, uh, my, my grandfather was the captain of a fisher boat in New Bedford, oh. and I wanted to kind of do a kind of memorial to that and, like, the heritage of all fishing and how New Bedford feels about fishing. It's just connected in our blood. Now tell me about the film. How do you make a film out of you know, these puppets and stuff. So it's 24 photos a second. And so it took me nine months to make four minutes and 20 seconds. Wow, that's so exciting and so yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of work because you really have to know how to kind of handle gravity. Things are going to break. Your cat's going to bump into your camera mid-shot, and you're going to have to re-record everything. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It yeah. seems like it's really <laughs> meticulous work, right? Yeah, it is. It's It's kind of... Mind-numbing. <laughs> now, do you have a studio that you work at? So I, s I actually do it in all like my apartment right now, um, but I would love to have a studio. And you also have another line of work, do you not? I'm a tattoo artist. So right now I am guest spotting at the Whaling City Tattoo Company in the Kilburn Mill. Um, yeah, you, Kilburn Mill. It. They're great. Such a great team over there. Um, usually I'm in Miami tattooing at Glare Poop Studios. All right. And do you, do you like um, self-tattoo? Yeah, I've tattooed myself a bunch of times. It's, that's how I kind of taught myself. Right. Yeah. So is it difficult to tattoo yourself? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it hurts, a, right? Yeah, I tattooed a portrait upside down on my leg. <laughs> oh, yeah, what portrait is that? It's my grandmother. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So, so how long her. did it take you to do that? Um, probably four hours. Hey, Gary, you have any tattoos? <laughs> he doesn't have a microphone. I know that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. Yeah, I didn't know that. We've been working together, what, over a year now? There's a lot about me that you don't know, that you think you know. <laughs> I you see one right on the it. arm. But know. but know this. You know. You know. Russ knows. Russ knows. Um, There's so, a lot I don't want to know, I yeah, think. Yeah, no, trust me. <laughs> you know, that gets, a bi that gets a big, yeah, right. No, uh, back to the guest now. No, no, but you don't have to answer the question if you don't want it. But where's the tattoo and what is it? Do you want me to show you? Uh, <laughs> Show it, show it. Want to show you? All right. <laughs> I've done some of those. <laughs> Please. It's all over Facebook. <laughs> all right. Back to the guest. Please, back, back to the guest. Uh, so, uh, you know, tattoos. I've never had a tattoo before. Uh, it seems to be more popular now. It seems Absolutely. to be like, you know, these tough guys have tattoos and all that. But now everybody gets tattoos, right? Oh, so, yeah. So tell me, yeah. tell me about that. Tell me about how it's become more popular and more accepted. Um, I mean, even job-wise, I feel like a lot of people are telling me, oh, my job allows it now. And I think kind of media, pop culture, tattoos just became way more upset, accepted. Right. So do you think there was like a negative connotation there for a while? That's changing? Yeah. yeah. Like even face tattoos still have a connotation to them. But honestly, 
a lot of people now I know have face tattoos. And right. They, and they want face tattoos, neck tattoos. It's a style. Well, it's, it's like so Post Malone. Right Post Malone has all the yeah, tattoos. Yeah, Post everything. Malone did it. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. <laughs> so you have a place down, what, in Miami Beach, is it? Um, I, I started in Miami Beach, and that was horrible. Don't start tattooing in Miami Beach on spring break. Oh, what happened? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Well, people would come into your place and say, I want a tattoo. And yeah, and they were mostly drunk, and they want palm trees and, like, Hennessy shots tattooed on their neck. What's mm. wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, but if I, if I went into your store down in Miami and I said, hey, I want a palm tree <laughs> or whatever, yeah. but you still it. do it, right? Yeah. Now I work at Glitter Poop Studios, so that's not on Miami Beach. It's near Wynwood. So it's really a chill vibe, and it's, like, uh, it, most of the artists are females, and it's really right. beautiful. Is there any limit on what tattoo you would have and where you would put it? <laughs> what are you looking at me for when you ask that question? How do I get that? What no, do no, I'm, ju I'm just asking a question. I'm just curious about that. <laughs> I, I really do anything. I, I tattoo anything. Really? All right. I, have this one spot, I have this one spot that everybody's refusing to do. So if you do anything, we'll talk after the show. <laughs> hey, you, see, you know, you're sitting at this table. See that guy with the beard? That's crazy Casey. I think he wants to have a tattoo, but he has to roll over. <laughs> He's got to roll over on his stomach. He's going to get the tattoo. <laughs> he wants a Jameson bottle tattooed to his rear end. That's I'll it. do it. I've done a lot of butt tattoos. Oh, oh is that right? <laughs> well, in Casey's case, you've got a lot to work with. Hey! Yeah. Yep. Good canvas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. No, well, tattoos uh, are, are becoming more popular. A lot of people have a lot of fun with them and stuff yeah. like that. So, you know, I think it's a great thing to be getting involved with. But this thing with the puppets, right? Now, who is yeah. this uh, scary person right here? So that's the captain of the boat in my film. Um, my film's called Widow's Peak. It's going to be premiering Saturday, 420, um, 12 to 1 p.m. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's fantastic. At the super, New super. New Bedford Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, Groundworks Cafe, I think. Does this guy have a name? No, no. Does he have any tattoos? On his butt. Yeah? Oh. Uh, a little anchor. No, oh my god. <laughs> oh god oh sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, so you're going to be heading back to uh, Miami. Uh, you're visiting your hometown. It's always nice to yeah, visit. Yeah, uh, I love being Beautiful city of here. New Bedford, right? Right here. Yeah, right Absolutely. here in New Bedford. <laughs> yeah. Well, we really appreciate you uh, stopping by here tonight. I wanted to catch Thank you before you. you went back. I wish you all the success with both of your businesses, and we really appreciate you stopping by and your great sense of humor. Thank you so okay, much. Once again, <laughs> Julia Hurley, Francisco Cibo. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for being here. All right. At this time, we'd like to take the opportunity to thank our guests. How about Ross and Danny from Immuner? Yeah, guys are a lot of fun. How about Sean and the rest of the guys from the NB Root Boys? How about that young lady we just chatted with a second ago, Julia Harley Francisco Simos? And we really love the comic tonight. Uh, Jay G was in the Jay house. G, yeah, he was, yeah. That guy was hilarious. And of course, Gary Hardy and the PSL band. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Paul, I'll see you. I, I'll see you in three weeks, right? I want to hear more about that tattoo. Yeah, I know you do. I know. <laughs> everybody in the audience is dying to know. I know. You know, remember that movie? I gotta know. I gotta know. Uh, and of course, uh, Hardy right over here. And of course, our director of comedy, always great in bringing these comics down here from Dying for Laughs, Allison Dying. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We're here just about every Monday night from 7 to 8, live on YouTube and Facebook. The show airs on uh, Wednesday nights. If you have Comcast Channel 95 in your bed for Dartmouth, Faven, and Kirchner, our show also airs bi weekly on ABC6 in Providence, Sundays at 10 30 a.m. So check it out if you can. We're going to be off next week. But we will be back right here in two weeks at Mikey B's. So if you have a chance to stop on by, we'd really love to see you. I'm Paul Santos for the Paul Santos Live Show. Don't forget to laugh and have a great night, everybody. Georgia. Georgia. A song.
comes in sweet and clear. Like no lie to a pine. Here I go.